The opinion of many analysts is that they are meh. Yes, they say they might have a role, they have some interesting features, but they do not change the overall reality. And at the end of the day, they are not really necessary. If this is true, why everyone, literally everyone who can, is working on them? second video in a series of three about international hypersonic weapons projects. We have already covered Iran, Germany and Brazil and now we keep going with Korea. In January 2022, out of the blue, North Korea announced a successful test of a hypersonic gliding vehicle. The vehicle was reported having hit a target at 700 km distance, maneuvering laterally for about 120 km in the process. And it was also mentioned that this was the second test of such a weapon. North Korea is very opaque in its programs, but the test was detected and confirmed by the Japanese, and it made waves. Sorry, 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 this is the editing gas. There is something that I didn't say in the original recording. Many sources believe that the North Korean hypersonic glider is sort of a copy or a derivation of the DF-17. It seems it's not the case. It seems that they developed autonomously a re-entry vehicle. It seems more like MARV, that is all technology, but it indeed demonstrated an hypersonic-like trajectory. So it actually seems that the North Koreans do indeed have the technology necessary, which is surprising. Back to the recording. In fact, South Korea was already aware of what was going on. Just a month before, it had unveiled the requirement for the high-core hypersonic missile. It is a hypersonic cruise missile whose general configuration is expected to be similar to the American X-51 Wave Rider. The missile is currently under development by a joint venture between the government DAPA agency and the defense firm Hanwha. According to Korean officials, the weapon is expected to provide conventional deterrence against North Korea and eventually China. In fact, the specification is to reach every target in North Korea within two minutes from the launch. It is still early days, but we will see how it is developing. Otis, stop this K-pop thing! Yes sir, no K-pop so is it K-pop. So, Japan has the problem of being able to defend its external islands without stationing massive forces in place because they would be very difficult to support. So, the idea is to engage high-value targets with very long-range weapons, difficult to stop. Sorry, is the editing us again. So, the Korean want to strike any place in North Korea within two minutes. The Japanese want to attack offshore targets with something that is capable of penetrating the defenses. This is an example of how the enlarged Western camp is seeing the hypersonic weapons. These countries, but the US as well, see these weapons as a way of hitting those targets that can disappear very quickly. On the flip side, countries like China or Russia are considering the hypersonic weapons more as the new normal. They sort of believe that in the long term they will replace any ballistic weapon rather than any subsonic cruise missile. This is the reason why they started the HVGP project for a hypersonic glider. It will work in the usual way, there will be a solid rocket booster and a hypersonic glider mounted on top of it. There will be a version for naval attack and one for land attack. The naval version will be aimed at countering the main surface vessels, while the land attack version will be designed to attack command posts or other high-value stationary targets. And in this case, Japan is aiming for a speed of about Mach 9 or 10. Apparently, they want the weapon in service quickly, so there will be a limited capability version in service from 2025 and a full capability version from 2030. But this is not the end, because in 2023 funds have been allocated to start the research to build an hypersonic cruise missile too. Yes, because Japan makes no mystery that they want to be in control of the full spectrum of the hypersonic capabilities. 
and we will definitely follow the development. So this is the end of video number two in a series of three and stay tuned because video number three will be out soon. We are still missing the main countries that are developing hypersonic capabilities uh, and when the video will be available it will appear in the links beside me. If you click on those videos you will be supporting the channel very effectively. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much to all those who support the channel on Patreon by being a member or by one-off donations. See you next time.